everyone. Welcome back to another episode of A Little More Light. My name's Dee. I'm Kev. And we are super excited to be here. I feel like we are always super excited. Yeah, Maybe said, that's just like a generic response. I think that's a common uh, introduction word to use. Yeah, because sure. I feel like if you were tuning into someone's podcast or like a message from anywhere and someone said, well, this kind of sucks to be here today. I don't know if that's like engaging or well, does maybe it even, it's intriguing. Does it even require you to say something like that? That's true. So I should like ju- when you like open up with a message, do you feel obligated that you have to be like, "Hello, everyone! Like I'm super amped, amped, jazzed, pumped, jazzed, razzled, expectant, expectant," <laughs> or do you just dive right into what you're gonna say? Mm, that's a good question. I am going to be now overthinking that every time I go and give a message. And you have a few coming up, so (laughs) you're welcome for that. Anyways, guys, so whether you are joining us on YouTube or um, in the podcast space, we're so glad that you are here. If you haven't uh, been following us for a while or at all, if this is your first time listening, welcome. Welcome. You have entered the space of two people who are below the average height line, who are living (laughs) a life between an immigration line there you go and we are trying to shine our lights Lights and point towards the line above us which is heaven well that's really yeah i just used line you're so proud of yourself i am (laughs) i don't know if it made sense but i like it anyways yeah guys so we're christians we love jesus we love pointing people (laughs) towards the truth and our goal in um, our individual lives, but also in our life together, yeah. is to just try to shine um, the light of Christ into the world and help make it brighter. I totally realized I said, yeah, before you even finished the sentence. Well, so yeah, yeah, I, amen. I agree mm, to yes, whatever Pastor. you were going to say. <laughs> Yo, but I don't know what, we were just talking about, uh, this might be off topic, but not off topic, but we were just talking about like pointing people to, to Jesus and mm-hmm. you had shared with me that message of that woman forget her name the cup cup analogy lady oh yeah i was um, watching uh like um from the liberty convocation yeah. megan fate marshman yeah that was a wild like i've never considered ob- obviously i hear the cup analogy but the way that she talked mm-hmm. about it and how we where we pour in our cup and pointed it up yeah be filled by him before we can fill other people i was like it was a random thought park head but uh so what good. what are you trying to say here i don't know you talked about <laughs> Us pointing people. Oh, to pointing Jesus, people to Jesus, but we have to me. be filled. Yeah, oh, okay, it guys. Reminded me of that, and then I felt like sharing. And okay, then... backtrack. I'll I'll back up, Kev here. So picture a cup in your hand, and the cup is facing up, and it's getting filled by God. And then when it tips over, you are pouring out the love, joy, peace, whatever you've received onto others. But then what happens when your cup gets empty and it's pointing towards other people? You're trying to get a lot of things that the world just can't offer you so that's when we've got to point ourselves back up to the one who can offer us everything um to then overflow and yeah. love on other people and can't give that hto <laughs> hto h20 H-2-O. there you go chemistry major if you can't <laughs> first get the hto yourself. exactly this is a great start for Kev. Oh, yeah it is uh, it's awesome okay so anyways guys we had a question for everyone listening <laughs> Did you or did you not watch the Olympic Games? Did you or did you not live under a rock? It's true. It's really the question that you... As soon as you said that, I had this image of like Patrick Starr from Spongebob laying under his rock. He probably did and not And then when the, the rock Olympics. comes up, he's like, hi, Spongebob. I just had that image. He didn't watch the Olympics for sure. Anyways, yeah, Olympics. Um, I, okay, personally, I love them. I think it's incredible to watch such amazing talent and just uh, the human abilities yeah. that people have. It just blows my mind every time. I know in there was some controversy with like the Christian stuff or like the the stuff in the opening ceremonies, mm-hmm. but Kevin and I talked about this and you know everyone's entitled to their own opinion and we have ours and I think that um it's you know the world tends to make a mockery of of a lot of things. And I do not think that is a reason not to watch um, people who've like worked their entire life to perform at that level who had no, no perp, like, you know, like, yeah, for sure. Weren't I'm... related to the 
those things that we're talking about. Yeah, like I mean, there's a ceremonies. whole, you could go a whole rabbit hole of why people didn't watch the Olympics and all that. I mean, I agree with you. I don't think there's any excuse for not watching people mm-hmm. who have poured their heart and soul into an athletic competition that only happens four times a year. Yeah. Wow. Four times. Holy. Oh, once, once every, once four, every years. four years. <laughs> Jeez, guys, I'm sorry. Um, Once every four years. And second to that, um, whether or not it was a mockery of Christianity, you can have your opinion there. But if you're so, maybe this is a take that I have, but if you're so willing to and so hurt by that and protesting something and not deciding to watch it, like as a Christian, reality check, a lot of people don't believe the same things that you believe. Yeah, that's true. Um, and so, like, I don't think it's a excuse to not watch the Olympics Yeah. because of one aspect in an opening ceremony where a culture is also showing off their culture. And let's be real, that's France. Mm-hmm. Yeah, and, France and, is just super, you know, driven in the arts. And so, whether we agree with it or not, which, I mean, we don't agree with it, but that um, that whole idea that I think we can still be in the world, but not of the world, we can still show love and we don't have to, you know, take a super extreme approach to everything. Because even in the Bible, like Jesus talks about Christians being persecuted, Christians, you know, yep. being um, made fun of for their faith and I think that's just the name of the game, but it's just not giving in to those things or I think extreme. But anyways, I didn't really think I was going to mention that, but I thought. You know what? It's better to mention it because I'm sure people are thinking. Yeah, exactly. Um, That's not the real reason why we brought up the Olympics. No, and I think it's just such a cool opportunity to talk about how um, amazing it is just to watch athletes who've trained pretty much their entire life and hopefully achieve something well, actually every athlete who goes there has achieved something great like the average person does not go to the olympics you don't just wake up and attend the olympic games no you don't no. um that is something that you work uh your butt off for mm-hmm. um even if it's a new sport like break dancing yeah break dancing <laughs> r.i.p I, yeah i don't i don't think it's actually going to be in the next no i know it's it's dead no yeah but i mean on that note, I feel really bad for that Australian breakdancer who's getting raked over the coals for their um, performance. Oh, yeah, she put it out there. That's just all I'm going to say. Yeah, they did. And it, um, it's just unfortunate that it's just been taken to the extremes. I feel bad. I, that's, that's I'm like, indifferent. <laughs> you are, yeah. I'm okay. Like, okay, anyway. Here, here. What, okay, if you could compete in any sport at the Olympics, what sport would you do? Any sport at the Olympics? Yeah, because Paralympics don't have all the same sports. So I'm thinking the Olympics. And like I'm good at it. Like I have a chance. Yeah, yeah. Like, like if you could be good at any sport and compete like, at I'm the like Olympics. I'm like a peak performer. Like yeah. I'm potentially. Sure. Metal potential. Sure. What would you like, want to do? Potentially gold. Like. Metal potential. Let's settle I could, with that. It's secured in my bag. You're top eight for sure. You're in the final. But what if it's a sport that has more than eight people? You're in the top eight. It's okay. What would you pick? Oh. Um, can I have two? Sure. Okay, number one, the marathon. No way. Oh, yeah. Oh, okay. And Interesting. then number two, golf, obviously. Wow. Because I'm Scotty Scheffler. just as good as Scotty Scheffler. Really? Yeah. Yeah, I mean, look at me. <laughs> oh, my gosh. So, no, okay, but marathon, marathon would and be golf. sweet because, I don't know, that'd be wild. I don't want to, like pick some obscure sport like i want to sorry not obscure they're all really awesome sports. you want to pick like a popular sport no it's just yeah not pop something that yeah maybe popular something that is already part of my life hmm. and so those two things running, running and golf, and golf yeah. are part of my life i sound like an average 27 year old man who's going what did they say going through those midlife yeah crisis or whatever? yes running training for a marathon playing, playing golf, golf on the weekends and probably looking to find a dog. Yeah, something like that. You're pretty much all three. Yeah, pretty much. Yeah, That's why you literally are. That's I a am. good definition of where Kev's at right now. But not everyone is little, so suck it. He's still <laughs> unique. Oh, my gosh. Oh, okay. All right, your turn. What would I pick? Yeah. Um, all right, you can't pick something that everyone already knows you're going to pick. I, I would not pick swimming because okay. that's, like, another one. I've already done that. Check. Done that, been yeah. there, whatever. 
Do you want me to share my response? Yeah, sorry. Okay. Um, I would pick surfing, actually. Mm-hmm. So you'd be, be on, uh, where were they this year? They were? In Tahiti. Wow, you guys were on a cruise ship then. Yeah. Living it up. Yeah, we were. We were on a cruise ship. About to surf. <laughs> About to surf. What would you, what would be your, uh, your trick? Uh, I don't really... Okay, full disclosure, I don't really know much about surfing or, like, the names of the tricks. I only know that you can go through the, I think it's called the barrel, you know, when you're going and it's going, the water's going over yeah. you and it's like, and then you come out, like, yeah. you know that one? Yeah, yeah. That's the only one I know. And then maybe there's, like, a jump or something you do. But um, I just think that would be really fun. And I've surfed, like, only four times in my life and I've really enjoyed it. Nice. So I think that that would be a cool sport to learn um, and to, like, train for and then to go in it and do it. I like that. Mm -hmm. But sad thing, apparently in the L.A. 2028 games, they are not putting surfing in the Paralympics. Well, how's that? Why is that? Because they picked, I think they picked para rock climbing and some other sports to put into is it the games. Para surfing uh, a six qualification? Or no? Like a... Uh, is there like a category for low people? Yeah. I think there is, but they haven't, like there's adaptive surfing in the U.S. So I'm actually quite surprised that they never put surfing in there. So Interesting. It is interesting. Especially if it's in California. Anyway. Mm -hmm. Yeah. So um, surfing. Surfing would be mine. And then kind of like you, like I've been really into golf lately. Yeah, you got new clubs. I did. Kev let me get some new clubs. And I'm kind of, I'm so grateful for it. I'm so happy about it. But now I have to learn how to use new clubs, and so I suck again. That's it's like the hard the thing. the lesson of life. Like, I just started getting a little bit better with my junior clubs and then get these new clubs super pumped. We went to the driving range yesterday, and yeah. bad. Well, you'll be back in no time because... I think so. It's like you got to work your way up. Yeah, you it's a just senior. a whole, whole other, like... Demen like not dimension, but it's like they're different dimensions of the clubs. Yeah, like they're way longer, they're heavier, and so you just have to, I guess, Welcome learn the to swing. the game of golf. Yeah, yeah. Now you have like more than just a short, mid, and long club. Yeah, so I had five clubs, and now I have like thirteen, eleven. Now you probably have ten. Ten. Yeah. You well, know, I have my driver. My okay. okay well, I'll count need, these. We don't need, a, we don't need to bore people. <laughs> driving That's with true. you counting clubs. Anyways, guys, send us your golf tips because we've been golfing quite okay, a whoa, lot. Whoa, whoa, whoa. Sorry, send me your golf tips. Yeah, Kevin just... is a professional. Not professional, but He's I'm an decent. amateur. I shot my first 85 the other day. So oh, yeah, he did. Very happy. And it was an honest 85, it too. Was I was honest. there. And I counted the scorecard to make sure that yes. it was not we don't, a lie. We don't cheat on the course. No, we don't. We well, sometimes when the ball goes in the rough, I like grab it and then I put it where I can hit it better. Um, but maybe I won't do that anymore. <laughs> you just told everyone, so now you're accountable. Okay, okay, so we talked about sports that we would participate in if we were in the Olympics. <laughs> yes. Um, but, you know, the Olympics just happened, but that's not really the end of the summer competitions in Paris. No, we're like building momentum to the one of the second biggest sporting events in the world, and that is the Paralympic Games. Do, do, do. So it's been four years. Three, actually, with COVID. Sorry, three years. It's been three years, not four years. Mm -hmm. Three years since you've competed on the biggest stage for para-athletes in the world. Yeah. Um, 2021, mm -hmm. summer, Tokyo. Uh, so how do you feel? Hmm. Mixed emotions, actually. Surprisingly more emotional watching these than I thought I would be. Why is that? I think it's because I don't miss the day-to-day -day training, and I don't miss the necessarily like a lot about swimming because I was quite done with it at the end. But I, I think why? I've, how would I say this? Like I'm, I'm emotional because COVID really impacted our games experience like mm -hmm. we had no spectators we had so much that was taken away and I think watching the games now having experienced them 
with all of the crowds, with all the excitements, yeah. with no restrictions, it it has made me, I think, a, feel a little bittersweet about how we didn't get to have that. Like you're not, you don't feel cheated out because obviously, any time that you make it to that competition, mm-hmm. it's a huge deal. But it's like you look at it and you're like, of course, like the like, one time, the right? one time you make it. Oh man, like that's that's too bad. Yeah. Um. So I think I've been a little bit more like maybe in my feelings about that. Uh, which I've been quite surprised about. But other than that, it's been just really fun getting to feel the angst and the the buildup of yeah. watching sports while like knowing that you don't have to deal with that. So how do you like how do you grieve something that you know you were done with and finished with, yet like it's something that is still like you can't run away from in yeah. a sense. Like it comes back in your life and you experience it. Like how do you how do you manage the grieving of like understanding like this is something that I did. It's no longer what I do. But then also recognize that like you are going to feel those same emotions now. Yeah. And not necessarily be like, man, I wish I was there. Like I wish. Yeah, that's tough. Because like it's really easy. It's a good question. I don't know. It's like I, I would assume it's really easy and, and things I've, I've experienced. Like you know the thing that you did like you're done with. Yeah. Like you know it's it's. That you're part of your life is done. Yet. You're not going back. But then when like aspects of that thing come back into your life, you have like forget syndrome where or like mm-hmm. where you automatically then forget all the things that you agreed to saying I'm done to. Yeah. And then that one maybe fun aspect, right? Like the Paris or the Paris games or mm-hmm. Paralympic games come back up. Yeah. And like you probably have those feelings of like, oh, I want to jump back in. Or like. Yeah. Yeah. Honestly. And no, that's how, a like, good question. Like how to manage that, yeah, or how to deal with that. Um, I think often about the like the story in the Bible of Lot's wife, and there's a story where like God is leading them out of the city, um, Lot and his wife, yeah, and he tells them, "This one's a good Don't one. look back. And then, um, his wife ends up looking back, and then she turns into a pillar of salt, and then mm. Lot keeps going and and whatnot. And I think there is something that so important about when a season of your life ends or when a door closes that there is an important aspect of us completely turning our focus and not looking back yeah because if we are to be led out of something so like can't be a swimmer my entire life like we can't do a lot of things like for very long um and there's always new things to do I don't think that we would actually be able to leave the old things to embrace the new things. And so for me, I think it's just been a lot of like, okay, don't look back. Like, don't look back. That doesn't mean I can't look back on memories or I can't, you know, keep friendships or or whatnot. But it's not looking. It's it's kind of that just that reality of like, no, that's not what I do anymore. I said I was done. And now don't look back and focus on what's next. Mm. Because if you don't, also, you're going to miss, like, everything that's yeah. happening in front of you. That's and, cool. like, I think I would feel really bad if I was so caught up in what I'm not doing anymore, what I was, like, what I feel like I'm missing out on, and I was totally missing what you and I are doing now. Yeah. Like, that would good. be a, a huge good. disservice to you, huge disservice to God and what he wants to do um, in our life now. Yeah. Um. And then it would also just be like I think just constantly bringing up emotions of yeah. what we went through and yeah that's what I would say. But even like what you said about how those emotions come up um, when your eyes are focused like forward and not backwards, that doesn't mean that you won't experience those emotions. But at least you're not stuck dwelling on them and like stuck in them. Yeah. Like your eyes are forward, you're moving forward. Those emotions might come onto you. But, like, they're not, you're not sitting in them. Yeah, that's good. Like, you're moving forward. Mm-hmm. And so I I would say to anyone who's, like, trying to get out of a situation that they've, you know, the, the door's been shut, it's really obvious, um, a season of your life is over and you're trying to move forward, don't d- get discouraged when you do get, like, bogged down by some of those yeah. old emotions because emotions come and go. Like, yeah. there's ebbs and flows of Absolutely. them. Absolutely. But as long as you're still facing forward... You won't stay in those. Yeah. Right. So. Yeah, like that facing forward is is like 
the ultimate act of obedience, right? Mm-hmm. Like God, God has asked you to, to obey and it's usually a command yeah. that he's given you to say, hey, move on or mm-hmm. move out of this. And like, it's not only things that have been good in your life that are past struggles, past things. Like yeah. he also like past sins, it's the same thing, right? Yeah. Like if you look back on things that you knew weren't good and continue to dwell on them, and then it might lead you back into that temptation to do it again. Yeah, because what you're focusing on, like that's what's going to occupy your mind. And if you're focusing on what's ahead of you, what God's doing, or if you're focusing on Jesus, even when those emotions come, at least you're not fixated on those. Like you can experience them, but there you go. Yeah. So that's, but that's really like I say that, but I'm not, I'm no expert at it. And that's yeah. been a little bit more of a struggle watching these games. And I'm sure when the Paralympics start on August 28th, like I'll feel the same type Absolutely. of tension. Yeah. Um, but now I just get to watch and just be super happy for my friends, super excited for everyone and get to, you know, like I'm a Paralympian for like the rest of your life, the rest of my life. So that's, you can't take that away. You can't. Mm-hmm. No, it's pretty cool. Yeah. And, uh, I think your Paralympic journey was, I mean, different than most for a lot of reasons. But uh, also this week, something pretty exciting came out. You got to document your Paralympic journey. I did. Yeah. yeah. So what what came out? Uh, so I was in a documentary um, that was pretty fun to be a part of. And this documentary is called Rising Phoenix Road to Tokyo. And it's a, a production company based out of the UK who followed 12 athletes on their road to the Paralympics. So we started filming in, I think it was like April, May, I think it was May of 2020. So right when COVID kind of started, um, I built a swimming pool back in the day in our backyard. And I think that's how they found me. And then I auditioned for this thing. I, they obviously liked my, my tapes and stuff. And so then, um, basically it was, I guess, 2020, a year and a half of filming ourselves throughout the pandemic, documenting the changes, documenting the training, the the closures, the vaccines, the um, highs and lows, the, the games getting postponed. Mm-hmm. All of that was documented on camera. It's it, wild. It's so wild. And then um, my journey to making the games was documented. And then eventually when I was in Tokyo, they filmed that as well. Yeah. And it just came out, like Kevin said, this week. Craziness. Mm-hmm. So it's three episodes, like 45 minutes each. And um, episode two, when you guys watch this, uh, we will link them below. They're all on YouTube. But episode two, bring your tissues. It's a it's a it's tear. A it one. makes me cry every time. Um, well, it's cool to watch. I mean, we were just dating. I When you started, we weren't dating So yet. true, yeah. Um, we started dating in December of that year. So you were in the... The thick of filming, so to speak. I was, yeah. Using your techniques to be able to film yourself so the crew didn't have to come. But, um, no, it's pretty cool to watch the full production now Mm -hmm. um, and relive that that time of your life. That's that's true because, like, Kevin and I, we were long distance, and so we he wasn't with me during this period of time. So I guess, like, seeing that on film would be pretty cool for you Mm -hmm. to see. Kind of, yeah. Oh, it's interesting. And it's it's really well done. Matt Whitecross was the director. Um, he's awesome. He directed a lot of stuff with Coldplay. Um, he's amazing. His kids are great. Um so go check it out. Yeah. hmm It was it's it's good. It's a good one. But it's only available on YouTube from now until September eighth when the games are done. So make sure you go and watch, share with your friends and family. If you're watching Let me know what after, you think. It sucks for you. Yeah that's hopefully you're watching it in that time frame um, but it's cool because it really sets the stage for the Paralympics what to expect when you guys watch it um, and I hope you guys do really like tune into the Paralympics because it really is not second tier sport yeah. like it's it's pretty incredible um, watching some of the athletes and hearing about the stories and the lives that they live um, and how they've chosen to you know pursue something as cool as sport and so i think the coolest thing about the paralympics is like obviously it brings a wide array of individuals together but Mm -hmm. you have a wide array of um experiences and what's so crazy about para sport is you have individuals who have been disabled their entire lives true then you have also individuals who've experienced um both sides of the coin so to speak where they've been able-bodied 
um, and, and then have become and then disabled. Become later disabled, on. and yeah, that wow. it's just a wild um, mix of talents and athletic abilities. And I think in para sport too, like watching that documentary, you realized you didn't necessarily have to be like a I don't know how to say this. Like you didn't have to be an elite at that at a some of those sports mm-hmm. at like a really young age. Like mm-hmm. some of these people found a sport because of the, like, yeah, as a coping mechanism for their disability or yeah. as like an outlet for their disability. And they found it later in life, but yet they still excelled because they have mm-hmm. like athletic abilities. Like I'm thinking about that woman from the U.S. Like I think she was an amputee that then yeah. became like a track star. Yeah, and then but then for you, it's like you no, know, this woman's been part of your life from for a while, a long mm-hmm. while. So it's like. It's wild, and then you get p- people with different disabilities racing against each other, and I still don't understand the classification systems, but... Many people don't. <laughs> it's insane, so... Yeah, it is it is cool, and it definitely uh, broadens your perspectives, I think, and yeah. it, um, hopefully it can be a, some sort of an encouragement to you know dig a little deeper, push a little harder on the days that you don't want to when you see um, people who definitely have it um, a lot more challenging than the average person you know, excel at that level. Mm -hmm. And it's just great. Like, sports are fun to watch. I mean, two athletes saying that's pretty easy. But I think a lot of people can get and gain excitement and motivation by watching something like the Paralympics. So definitely watch. Kevin and I will be watching as much as we can. Uh, We've got a busy couple months coming up, um, which we're very excited about. A lot of traveling, a lot of um, speaking, a lot of podcasting, and just having a good time. It's going to be great. It's going to be great. So, so, you got anything else for the peeps? I don't have anything else for the peeps. So, today was good. We talked about a lot. I don't remember exactly what we talked about. Oh, my gosh. <laughs> no, I think, honestly, uh, today it was good just to, to hear your perspective on um, the games, your experiences. I mean, you're carrying, like, you carry those memories in your backpack, so to speak, mm-hmm. um, and years of training to get to the biggest stage and also I think you shared a lot of good wisdom on how do you not look back on certain things once they've happened in your life um but you know you always carry um that special time with special people and I'm proud of you thank you Kev that was so sweet I'm gonna itch my nose too yeah (laughs) it's like picking his nose on the camera I know it's like (laughs) I couldn't hold it no that was sweet thank you very much um And so if you guys have liked this episode, you know, like, subscribe, uh, share it with a friend, and enjoy watching the Paralympics. And we will see you next time on another episode of A Little More Light. Peace. Bye.